Hello, I'm Dr. Marcelo Brito. We're going to talk about central stenosis, endoscopic surgery for central stenosis. There's very few material available online, so I decided to bring it to discuss the technique. First step is to find the center of the interlaminal window. We're going over the top, yes, but it doesn't actually change from the regular interlaminal procedure. We find the center of the interlaminal window, then we go up to the upper lamina and we clean it, we take out soft tissue, then we go to the facet laterally and then down to the lower lamina. So first the L4 lamina, the facet and the uh, L5 lamina and then we can go contralateral through the yellow ligament on the top of the canal and we go contralateral to the left side. This is an MRI image and we can see in green uh, the spinal process and the laminas, in blue some calcification inside the canal and in red the little canal that remains open for the patient. Uh, we're gonna turn this image upside down to understand it better. Exactly. But first, let's check these images. First image on the left is a regular spinal canal, uh, and the image in the center shows actually the central stenosis with hypertrophy of the facet joints and the yellow ligament leading to uh, quite compression of the dural sac. And the, the right image, we see an over-the-top decompression. And now I'll, I'm gonna put our instrument in green Yes, and we are gonna uh, actually shave the, the laminas upside down, and then we enter ipsilateral into the canal and clean what we have. Then we pull back and twist our hand and go contralateral over the top. This is what we're gonna see in the next images. And I'm gonna transform this image in the post-op image, and we can see the durosac free and, uh, decompre and the, the compression removed. So this is our first endoscopic image. We're gonna get rid of the soft tissues. So this is uh, a bipolar and we're gonna coagulate vessels and get rid of muscle and other soft tissues. Uh, three o'clock, it's the upper lamina. We are assessing through the right side and L4, L5 through the right side. So three o'clock, we have the upper lamina. Six o'clock, we have the facet joint, okay? Um, on the bottom of the image, the yellow ligament. And at nine o'clock, we have the lower lamina, L5 lamina. We're gonna use the burr and get our window wider. So we clean the upper lamina, we clean the facet, we clean the lower lamina, and when you think it's okay, we start to take out the yellow ligament. It's the basis of the spinal process. This image shows the basis of the spinal process. So we are on the top of the canal. If I get through this, I go over the top and go to the left side, to the contralateral side. We see now the top of the canal and we can complete the decompression with our kerosene, with a, a pinch or scissors or any other instrument you, you are used to. So we're gonna take now the yellow ligament. We can start to see the, the durosac, a nice image of the durosac and the yellow ligament being removed from the upper lamina, from the facet and from the lower lamina. Sometimes you take it through parts and sometimes you can take like big parts of the, the yellow ligament. This shows uh, a big piece of the yellow ligament. And now we start to see a decompressed dural sac, but it's only the ipsilateral side. 
we need to complete the decompression. We see a little bit more of yellow ligament. So you use the scope, you navigate with the scope, and you see if you need to complete the decompression on the upper lamina and the lower lamina, and you can free the dural sac. When you are when you are satisfied in the ipsilateral side of the the surgery, you can now start to take the yellow ligament of the top of the canal. You see six o'clock uh, the dural sac and twelve o'clock the top of the canal with much yellow ligament. So we can divide structures and try to take the yellow ligament leaving uh, and touches the dural sac. That's what we're doing now. Using the punch, using the kerosene and the burr, you combine your instruments and you are working at the top of the canal, getting the getting it decompressed. You're gonna use a little bit more the punch, then you're gonna change for, for the burr. And now you are seeing the face joint on the contralateral side. We just take the yellow ligament and you start taking it out. And now you, we reach the contralateral side, the left side. We are over the top of the canal, over the top of the canal and over the dural sac. When we get a dural sac uh, moved, we see in white on the bottom of the image, the, the disc. So we can take maybe a uh, herniated disc from the other side, uh, foraminal stenosis, uh, lateral recess stenosis. You can reach whatever you want to decompress it completely. We see now the disc and the yellow ligament in the lateral recess. We're gonna get it clean a little bit more to get satisfied with our procedure. Now we see actually the top of the canal. We are seeing the ipsilateral side. Then we are progressing to the contralateral side with the cannula. A thinner material helps you to get inside the canal. If you have a thick material, you just can, can do that. So with a thinner material, we can get in, we can check the disc on the other side, check the foramen on the other side, and with, with, very, with much comfort. You're seeing the, the facet joint and the foramen. And now we're turning to the dural sac to see that even when we are in the other side, in the contralateral side, the dural sac is still decompressed and our cannula is not actually causing any compression. Now, uh, I'll bring a multiple level case just to illustrate our lecture. This is an 80 year old lady with arthrosis and the hips and the knees and in the spine. And the sagittal MRI, we see that she, the, the canal is very stenotic. Uh, especially in L3, L4, and L4, L5. This video shows dynamically the compression in L4, L5, now L3, L4, and L2, L3, and L1, L2 not so compressed. So uh, we decide maybe to decompress the two worst levels, L3, L4, and L4, L5. I'm going to put all the images now, the XL images, so we can compare. L4, L5 and L3, L4 are the worst levels and I decided to, to decompress them. The other levels were not so bad, so on multiple level case we see the, the final result of the, the decompression of the dural sac and the both sides getting over the top, getting to the contralateral side and with a very fine decompression. We can see the dural sac free and not any compression left. 
This is the post-op image, and the left, the sagittal post-op image, and the axials on the right. We see a, a very good decompression, but we're going to compare the pre- and the post-op images now, and the sagittal, that we see uh, uh, the, other, the other levels are not actually changing, and L3, L4, and L4, L5 really decompressed. Now, in the upper side of the image, L4, L5, and the lower side of the image, L3, L4. We see a, a very important difference. Uh, the canal really uh, reconstructed with any obstruction left. Well, I guess that's all. Thank you for your attention. If you have any doubts, write down here or send me an email. See you.